Whether you like to eat them straight off the tree or baked in a pie, there's nothing better than a nice juicy apple. Today we're going to talk about apple production. We have Doug Jimerson. He's the garden editor with Better Homes and Gardens. Hey, Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now we're standing in your orchard. Yes. And tell me what kind of tree is this right here? The tree behind us is a John of Gold apple. It's a semi-dwarf tree and one of my favorites in terms of eating fresh. Is it ready to uh, pick? It's ready right now. Feel free to take any apple you like. All right. And uh, I know there are a lot of different varieties. What other varieties do you raise? We raise wine saps, Macintosh, Grimes Golden, Northern Spy, Golden Delicious, Red Delicious. Mm. It's tart, but still sweet. That's what I like about it. It's got the, the two different flavors of the, the uh, Golden Delicious and the Jonathan mixed together. Are there different types of apple trees? Yes, there are. There are actually three apples come in three main types, dwarf, semi-dwarf, and standard. The one behind us, the John Gold, is a semi-dwarf. You can see it gets about 15, 16 feet tall. Uh, the standards can get up to 30 feet tall. They're the big, massive trees. And then the yeah. dwarfs will top out at 8 to 10 feet. And where do I plant my trees when I get them? Apples are pretty easy. They need full sun and well-drained right. soil. They, they won't grow where they will in muck and clay, wet spots. But as long as they get six to eight hours of sun a day, they'll take off. Do you spray these trees? We don't. We're an organic location. Um, and as many apples as we have, we don't really need to spray. Right. Uh, spraying comes down to a personal preference in terms of what's a perfect apple. To me, a perfect apple tastes delicious. Right. How it looks is really not a, of concern to me because we're not selling to the public. But if you want apples that look like the apples you see in the grocery store, you need to have a spray program. Well, there's a few <laughs> spots, but it doesn't make any difference. No, those are rust spots, and, and uh, they really don't make any difference in the taste. And if you peel apples, it really doesn't matter. What kind of maintenance is required? Apples really require a pruning. That's probably the main thing they need. Okay. You get out in the wintertime while the plant, while the tree is dormant, and you take out the cross branches, the dead branches, and you open it up a little bit so sunlight gets in the center, as we have with this tree, as well as um, any vertical branches. Fruit is born on horizontal branches, right. so anything vertical, they're frequently called water sprouts. You'll see them growing up out of the trunk of the tree. You want to whack them out. So once your tree produces, you have all these apples, what do you do with them? Well, in our case, we have so many, we like to make cider. So we have an oh. antique cider press, and I can show you how that works. That sounds like. delicious. Let's go try. So this is the press. This is it. How old is this, Doug? This was built in the 1800s. Wow. Can you get new ones? You can't get new ones off the internet and from some, some of the gardening magazines sell them. Are they built about the same as this? Pretty much the same, same technology. It's just a lot newer. All right. Can you walk me through the process? Well, you basically put a few apples in the top, All right. or a few apples. You fill your hopper with apples. There's a grinding mechanism And in I don't here. have to take stems no, off? No, All you right. don't. There's a grinding mechanism inside. So you just turn the, turn the grinder. Hear that crunching sound? Yep. It's eating it's apples. It's eating the apples. It sounds just like somebody biting into an apple. And all that falls down into this basket, oh, yeah. which has a, uh, a net bag inside it. This captures all the, the pulp and the cores and everything else into, into there. OK. So what do you do when you're done grinding the apples? When you're done grinding, you take your net bag, you fold it over like so. And this is a double barrel cider press. You have to move this up here now. All right. See, if you're really doing it, you could put this one over here and keep grinding while you're Just doing another batch. Grinding. Then you put that there, the net there, and then you take this heavy board, okay. which fits perfectly, right underneath. Then you start to use the screw. So it's all just the way down. Literally pressing it's, down on the apples. Yep, that's hence the name. How many apples does it take to make a gallon of cider? It depends on the variety. The juicier the apple variety, the, the more you get. But we found here about a bushel of apples makes about a gallon of cider. Can you use like all different kinds of apples? Yes, all different kinds. It's a better flavor the more variety you put into the mix. Right. And you can also use a lot of the apples you wouldn't use for anything else, windfall apples that have been beat up or yeah, fallen they from the tree. Aren't, they aren't the prettiest, but they still taste good. They still have juice in them. And so you just turn this all the way down. And this will press out the cider into that bucket. All right. And then when you're done, you just go the opposite way. Take this up. Take it up. Take the bag out. Dump the bag. Now, what do you do with the pulp? Well, you can use it on your compost pile. Or in, in our case, we have both chickens and sheep here on the farm, and they enjoy eating, eating that. Bet. And it's a nice supplement to their diet. And then you drink the cider. Then you get to drink the cider. Should That's we have part. some? Certainly. We just made. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Mmm. Delicious. It is very good. 
Thanks for being on the show, sure. Doug. An apple orchard can provide shade and beauty as well as providing fresh apples in the fall.